Good morning, my name is Andrew Gardeen, and today we're going to take a closer look at adjusting and fitting properly the Easy Stand Bantam. The Easy Stand Bantam is the latest pediatric standard from Ultimate Medical that accommodates children in a, in a seated position, a standing position, or even a supine position. To use your Bantam properly, it's crucial that you get the fitting and adjustment set up properly for each child that's using the Bantam, whether it's a child who's growing or if it's in a multi-user environment where several children are using the Bantam. When we're, when we're making adjustments on the Bantam, there's some main areas that we want to accommodate. First, we want to make sure the seat depth is set properly. We want to make sure the foot, tra the foot plates are dropped low enough or are set properly, and we want to adjust our knees. If we can get the position of our hips and knees and ankles properly fit in the Bantam, it's going to lead to superior positioning in both the standing position, supine position, or seated position. Let's take a closer look at adjusting seat depth. When we're adjusting seat depth, we want to do this before the child gets into the unit. And to make this process as easy as possible, it's always a good idea to remove the shadow tray if you have it on your Easy Stand Bantam. The shadow tray adds, front, adds weight to the front of the unit, so by taking it off, it's just going to make your seat depth adjustment much easier. Second, elevate your Bantam just a little bit. This will also facilitate and make your uh, seat depth transition easier to do. When adjusting seat depth on your Easy Stand Bantam, there's two places that need to be adjusted. First is the seat tube, which is directly underneath the seat, and this controls seat depth. Then there's the following arm, which is off to the side, and this controls the back angle, either reclined at 90 degrees or in a little bit of an anterior position. Before we adjust the seat depth, what we need to do is loosen the knobs on the following arm, located here, and on the seat tube, located underneath the unit. If we want to adjust the seat depth closer in for a small child, then we want to adjust the small bar first. So right now, I have the seat depth set all the way back in the furthest seat depth position. You know that by looking at the, at the button on the following arm. I depress the button. I make sure and loosen uh, my knob on the side. When I'm making this adjustment, I only want to go a few holes at a time because it helps me contain better leverage on making the whole adjustment. Now that I've adjusted this position two times, I'm going to move to my seat tube and make an adjustment there. Once I've made one adjustment there, I can go back and go two further positions on my seat tube or on my following arm, back to the seat tube, one position, following arm, two positions, seat tube, one position. When I'm setting my seat depth adjustments, once I, once I think I have it to the depth that I'm, that, I, that I'm trying to achieve, what I want to do is make sure that my colors match up. So I look on the seat tube, and I see here that I'm set in the purple setting. I just want to make sure that my following arm back angle adjustment is also set in the perfect purple setting, and it is. And so what I can do is now that I have it set, I want to bring it all the way down and just check to make sure that my back angle is correct. You'll see when I bring it down to a seated position, I'm in a 90 degree seat to back angle. What we've just done is uh, shrink down the seat depth three inches. What we're going to do now is take the same process and reverse it. So we're going to put the seat depth back in to the longest or furthest seat depth position that we can accommodate. To do that, we do the same thing, but we just do it in reverse and in the opposite sequence. So this time, if I want to go longer, I want to start with the longer or the bigger tube. So instead of starting on my back angle adjustment tube, I'm going to start on my seat tube. So I depress the button, and then I pull and lengthen the seat depth. And what I like to do is pull from the handle and get a little leverage off the seat. If you pull from up top, it's not going to work as well. So try to leverage your pull as low as possible on the seat. Also remember that it's a little bit easier if you elevate the seat just a little bit when extending seat depth. I extended one position on the seat tube. Now I'm going to extend two positions on the back angle adjustment. Now I'm going to do another position on the seat tube and two more positions on the seat to back angle adjustment. 
And then another adjustment on the seat tube. There's one further adjustment that I can make. So I'm going to go two positions more. Once we've done that, we can drop the unit down, make sure the seat to back angle is correct. And then following that, when it's correct, just tighten up your clamps and that'll take any a wiggle out of the unit and make it much more of a secure experience for the client. So I tighten those up. That secures the seating system into position and effectively what we've done is lengthen the seat depth back again. Once again, make sure that your colors match up and the furthest seat depth it would be green and green. The standard foot plates are adjustable in height and swivel. To make the adjustment, loosen the knob, lower or raise and angle the foot plate as desired. Remember to leave the femur resting flatly on the seat. Then you can tighten up the knob. Now, in addition, if you want more adjustment of the foot plates, you can order the multi-adjust foot plates. If you have multi-adjust foot plates, there's a couple of extra adjustments that you can make. By loosening the knob a little more in the multi-adjust foot plates, you also have the ability to adjust for dorsiflexion or plantar flexion. Then, by loosening the knobs underneath on the multi-adjust foot plates, you can also get toe adduction or abduction. You can also slide the foot plate forward or backwards on the additional multi-adjust bracket. Once the desired position has been achieved, tighten the knobs to lock the foot plate in position. So far we've taken a look at seat depth, foot positioning, knee positioning. Now we have our child seated in the Easy Stand Bantam. Let's take a look at some of the strap positioning. The basic Bantam comes with a chest strap. The chest strap is a Velcro system that adjusts through a D-ring. Tighten it securely and wrap it over itself to give the, the child good thoracic support. As an option, you can also order a seat belt or a positioning Velcro belt. It also adjusts with the D-ring. And as you adjust seat depth, the belt can adjust along on the bottom of the seat. In addition, you can also get foot straps or secure foot straps for your foot plates. These are especially helpful if you're going to be setting the child in planner position for extended periods of time. Now let's take a closer look at setting our back and head adjustments. The height of your thoracic support or back can be set by loosening this knob and raising or lowering the back support. In addition, there's support for head support height and head support depth. Finally, this knob on top of the unit allows for angle adjustment of the head support. So head, you can adjust for up and down or it's on a ball swivel. So any desired adjustment can be made for the head support. We've just been looking at the comfy seat system on the Easy Stand Bantam. Now, if you received an easy stand with standard seating configuration or planar seating configuration, there's some additional options that you can have, including hip supports or lateral supports. And those adjustments adjust in depth and width. Since our original Bantam video, we've made a few adjustments and improvements to the Bantam. And I just want to take the time to go through and show a few of the key improvements that we've made over the last couple months. First, I want to talk about the tray. The tray of the Bantam has, was originally adjustable in depth and height, but the two adjustments were tied together. Now we've separated those so you can have individual height adjustment and individual depth adjustment. To adjust the, seat, the depth of the tray, you just pull the pin out and you can make the adjustment in depth setting for the tray. And then you just insert the pin again when you've found the desired depth adjustment. Also, the tray still pulls out, 
for transfer in and out of the unit. We've put different length tubes on each side and that makes it easy when you're putting the child in to first feed one tube in and then get the other one set in place. When they're the same length, it was a little bit harder to get that done when you're dealing with a child at the same time. So that's the depth adjustment. Height adjustment is now made by loosening the knobs here and then we can pull up and set the, the height adjustment. We have about three or four inches of height adjustment in the, in the tray as well. And that's nice both in the sitting position or the standing position to really dial in where you want that height adjustment, especially as a child grows. We had that on the original versions, but the depth and the height adjustment were tied into the same uh, adjustable feature. Now, one thing that we've added to really improve the tray and the way the Bantam works is the angle adjustment. There's two, uh, the two knobs on the side here. If we loosen those, now we can set the tray with some adjustment in the angle. This is nice for setting a book on or for the child to, be, um, to push off of. And on the other side, if we set the unit into the supine position and we lock up uh, this position, we can also take that tray and do the opposite with it and leave it in a, in a position where it would be level so I can keep something on it even if I am going to stand for a little while in the supine position. Another key adjustment that we made on the unit was the knee pads. The original knee pads that we had were loosened from the side and you had to adjust the depth and slide them out at the same time. And it was basically a two-step process for adjusting the knee. Now what we've done is we've made the knee be able to pull directly off the front. And this just takes one step out of the transferring in and out uh, for the child. So I can leave on the independent knee pads, I can leave the, um, this bracket in and just by loosening one bracket and pulling straight off, it just makes transfers easier um, for children. So that's, the, that's, the way that the, that's a small improvement that we made on the knees, but it makes a world of difference in the ease of use. On the foot plates, we have smaller uh, foot plate um, holders um, for on the, extra, on the Bantam Extra Small. If you have a really small child under a year, two years of age, even three years of age, their feet are still pretty small. And if you have a lot of space around them, you can't always support them real well when they go to the standing position. So having those smaller foot plates for the smaller children was a key improvement that we made as well. One more thing is we have the... Um, brackets uh, for attaching the chest straps. By having these brackets elevated up and above the back support, instead of having the chest straps anchored below the back that drives the shoulders down into the seat, now by anchoring them higher, we can strap them down and instead of pulling the shoulders down, we can pull them back without pulling them down, making the child more comfortable and better supported as well. So that's an optional feature that we've added to the Bantam since its original release. So those are just a few key improvements that we've made um, and we hope that it makes your experience with the Bantam that much better.